I will be discussing your laboratory class, the final activity, which is your automation. Now, um, automation would be a very integral part in your internship and even in the practice. Now, if you recall class, I've taught you the manual CBC methods for the RBC count, the WBC count, the hemoglobin, and the hematocrit, and even the platelet count. Now, these are all very tedious processes, class. Matrabaho to, kasi you have to prepare the reagents, you have to make the smears, and all. Now, one of the advantages in our practice is that we have automation. Now, automation class would involve the use of automated machines. Now, these machines would have different principles. Now, like in your clinical chemistry class, there's are, there are different principles. So, spectrophotometer nyo, there are Beer's law, may mga ganon, may mga photometer, densometer, densitometer, and so on. Now, in your hematology class, there are also different principles. I'll discuss that later. Now, the necessity for automation would be the use for cell counts. So, when I say cell counts, this would refer to your RBC count, your WBC count, and your platelet count. It can also be used in the diagnosis of your hemoglobinopathies, like your hemoglobin S, your hemoglobin C. Di ba nga, in your, um, in your cyan met hemoglobin method, you could measure the different hemoglobin, hemoglobin types. Then there is also immunophenotyping, diagnosis of leukemia and lymphomas, and coagulation abnormality. So ito coagulation abnormalities na class, this will be taught in your hematology too. We have here your prothrombin time. Prothrombin time, which is one of the common. And your so-called activated partial thromboplastin time. So these are one of the coagulation tests na pwede nyo gamitin for coagulation of the malics. The PT and the ATT. Yan yung pinaka-common class. And that would be used in your discuss in your human. Now, this is the person who started it all. This is your, this man is known as your Wallace H. Coulter. Now, he invented the first automated analyzer for counting and sizing cells based on the famous Sculptor Principle. So, tandaan niya siya, class, si Wallace Sculptor. I'll discuss the Sculptor Principle later. Now, here are the advantages of your automation. Now, you have speed and efficient handling. So, let's say you're gonna process 100 specimens. Toxic yung laboratory niyo, class. Very toxic, you have plenty of patient. Now, it is very important to have speed, speed and efficient handling. Yan ang advantage ng automation. Then, it also provides accuracy and precision. Then, you could do multiple tests on a single platform or a single running. And it reduces labor. Yan nga sabi ko, di ba, your manual techniques are tedious. Pero kapag automated class, sobrang dali, uh, kahit nakatayo ka na lang. Disadvantages are your flagging, RBC morphology, erroneous results, and expensive. Itong flagging class, I will discuss this later. RBC morphology. Let's say you have a case of anisocytosis. Poikilocytosis. May variation sa size and sa shape. Now, if there are variations class, the machine isn't able to detect it. Hindi niya madedetect. Hindi niya masasabi what type of uh, abnormality is that. Is that a target cell? Is that a sickle cell? Hindi niya masasabi. Then there's a possibility of erroneous results. 
Now, to, to minimize this class, you're going to use what we call a control and also a calibrator. So, I won't discuss this anymore because I'm not sure naman na to sa CC nyo. So, your control are two types. Uh, in some, it could be high, it could be normal, it could be low. Sa iba naman, it could be positive, it could be negative. Sa hematology, you have your high normal. So, dapat ang control nyo should be um, should be uh, should have the same result in the what do you call class yung papel na kasama sa ano, the agent? What do you call that? Package insert, sir. Okay, so the same result in the package insert. So yung mga control nyo kasi would have a package insert in it. And there are reference values. So high, normal, and low. Now every time you would open a different reagent or open a different set of a note, you would have to run your controls. Now your controls could be run on a daily or a weekly basis. Depende sa SOP ng laboratory but normally, class daily talaga dapat yan. Ang problema lang sa daily kasi, expensive, madastos. And most automated machines class are expensive. They would cost around 500,000 to 1 million. Pataas. Okay, there are two types of automated hematology analyzers. We have your semi-automated and your fully automated analyzers. Your semi-automated analyzers class would measure only a few parameters. Some steps like dilution of blood is carried out, carried out manually. Now, uh, if you recall in your spectrophotometer machine class, diba, some steps are done manually. Now, an example of your semi-automated analyzers sa hematology class would be in the cyan met hemoglobin method. In your cyan met hemoglobin method, diba, you're going to prepare the blood. You're going to prepare the reagent manually. Then you have to feed it in the spectrophotometer. That is an example of your semi-automated. The word semi, meaning half manual, half automated. Then we also have the fully automated analyzer. Now, this would measure multiple parameters. Requires only anticoagulated blood. So you just need the blood class. And if you feed it na siya sa machine, you don't need to do any manual labor. Feed lang kagad sa machine, then the machine will do the rest. Okay, this is an example class of the components of a cell counter. So for the hydraulics, so when you say hydraulics, this would refer to the uh, movement of the sample. So we have the aspirating unit, which would aspirate the blood. Dispensers, diluters, so ito yung mga diluents niya. So if you notice, it is, it is the same principle as your manual. The only difference class is that it is uh, given on an automated basis. Then we have your mixing chambers, your aperture bath, and your hemoglobin. Then pneumatics would involve the vacuum and pressure operating modes. And electricals would involve analyzers and computing circuitry. So it would compute what is the WBC count, what is the RBC count? What is the plate? So now, earlier I talked about the different principles. So these are the five principles class in an automated blood analyzer. Let's discuss first the most common, the most common and the most asked about automated principle. The first one is your electrical impedance. Now, imp impedance would be related to the word impede. What does the word impede mean, class? Pag naririnig niya yung salitang yan. What is impede? Stop, sir. 
Okay, stop or block. So you will be stopping or block. Okay. Now, the principal class of your culture, this is the principle of your culture. The detection and measurement of change in electrical impedance produced by blood as it passes to an electrical field. Now, your blood cells class are poor conductors, diba? They are negatively charged of electricity and are suspended in an electrically conducive diluent. Two chambers with filled with conducive buffered electrolytes. Okay, simplify this. <laughs> this is where you would place the blood. Now, this is one of the chambers. Now, itong chamber na to class would have a passageway. Now, itong passageway na to, as the cell would move, as the cell would move, they would be counted one by one. Kaya nga, impede or stop. Magbablock sila dito, mag stop sila dito, and they would pass through one by one. As they pass through class, as they pass through, electrical charge or electrical voltage is given. Now, dahil dyan sa voltage na yan class, the cell size is determined. Again, here you have a chamber. The chamber would pass through a tube wherein the cell would pass through one by one and an electrical voltage would be introduced to them. And as they pass, the electrical voltage would determine the cell size. So kapag, kapag RBC, ano ba yung size yung femtoliters niya, kapag platelets, and so on for WBCs. Ta, para mas matindihan niya. As a cell passes through the aperture, flow of current is impeded and a voltage pulse is generated. The number of falls indicates the number of blood cells. So it, this would determine the count of your cells. The amplitude or the height of each pulse is proportional to the cell volume. So the, the, bigger, the bigger the electrical pulse, bigger the cell. Again, the number of pulse, pulse, pulses would indicate the number of blood cells. The bigger the, the size of the pulse, the bigger the cell is. The requisite condition for cell counting by this method is a high dilution of some. So it would measure class your RBC count, your WBC and platelet. So for the RBC electrical impedance or your coulter would count the RBC, the MCV, size distribution histogram, RDW, hematocrit, MCH, and MCHC. For the WBC class, sa coulter nyo, only three differentials are counted. You have your granulocytes, which is your neutrophil, your lympho, and your mono. So you may be wondering, sir, paano yung peso at ayo? So tingin nyo, class, what do you think is need to be done to determine your peso and ayo? Kapag ganyan lang yung machine nyo, your machine is limited to only three cell types. What do you need to do to identify the peso and the ayo? Anong stain? Stain mo yung machine? Sir Colo? <laughs> what? What do you mean by stain? Sige, malapit ka na. What do you need to do to determine your base in AO? If your machine is limited lang sa three cells, sa limpo lang, sa mono, sa kasa neutro, how would you know if there is a base of pill and an AOC na pill? Ano class? Any ideas?
Uh, how would you manually check it, Mr. Habison? Bubuksan mo ba yung makina at sisilipin mo yung WBC? <laughs> how would you manually check it? <clears throat> Barcelona, how do you do a manual cell type counting? Oops. Ano ka nagma-manual cell type counting? Stain lang din yung maano ko, sir. Complete, complete the ano. What do you mean by stain? Complete the answer. I stain po yung cells, ay uh, yung specimen, sir. Ano may stain yung specimen? Kukunin mo yung edta, haluan mo ng stain. I ano mo, you, you complete the answer. Uh, mag-smear, mag-perform pa, uh, mag-prepare po muna ng smear, then okay, i-stain. Uh, what's the stain use? Right stain? Or okay, right stain? stain, right stain. Then you're going to perform differential counts. Tama naman yung sagot ni Mr. Colum. <laughs> Kulang lang. Tama rin naman yung sagot siya. So, differential count class, magma-manual kayo. Now, uh, sa amin, in, in our laboratory, we only have this type of machine. Nakakulter kami. And we would only count limpo, mono, and neutro. Now, in cases class, ang lumabas sa limpo nyo is, let's say, ang neutro nyo, 80. Ang limpo nyo, 5. Ang mono nyo, 15. Now, Yung mono nyo class, sobrang taas, 15. Eh, di ba ang normal values lang yan? Minsan wala. Minsan no, isa lang, dalawa lang. If there's 15 class, you need to do what we call manual checking. And in manual checking, you have to make a blood smear. So you're, you're going to recheck the differential group. Malay nyo yung mono 15 na yan is a combination of AO and even base of this. So you have to recheck. Then it would also be used in counting platelet count, platelet histograms, MPV, and PDW. Next is proceed to your optical light scatter. Now, this is uh, the better version class. Now, here class, each cell would flow in a single line through a cell flow. A laser device is focused on the flow cell. A laser light beam would strike a cell and it would be scattered in various directions. Photo detectors would capture the light and pulse forward scatter light is directly proportional to cell size. Side scatter light corresponds to nuclear complexity and granularity of cytoplasm. Used to distinguish between granulocytes, lymphocytes, and Monocyte. So this time class, you're going to use a laser device. Now, uh, the laser would strike a cell. And when it strikes a cell, the laser would scatter in various directions. And that would, a photo detector would capture the light. So this is a better version class because it would differentiate five cell types. The neutrophil, the AO, the vaso, the limpo, and the mono. And can also be used for the mean cell volume. So kapag <coughs> electrical impedance or your culture technique or principle, three part lang ang kaya niya. But in optical light scanner, it can go five part differential. Then let's go to another one. We have your flow cytometry. Now it would measure multiple cellular and fluorescent properties of cells when they flow as a single suspension through a laser beam. So it would be able to identify the cell size, the internal complexity or granularity, and the relative fluorescence intensity. So this is the components of your flow cytometry. You have the fluidics or the flow system. Uh, normally class, you don't need to know this in, in the practice, but what's important is to know the principle. Now, 
nagiging important lang to in our profession in cases of what we call troubleshooting. Now, let's say nag, nasira yung makina, nag-bug down. You could troubleshoot it yourself. But normally, merong mga technicians class that would do this. Hindi dapat tayo gumagawa nun. But just to have an idea. So here are the components of your flow cytometry. You have the fluidics or the flow system. So your sample is injected into a stream of sheet fluid within the flow chamber. They are forced into the center of the stream, forming a single file by the principle of hydrodynamic focusing. Only one cell or particle can pass through the laser beam at a given moment. The sample pressure is always greater than the sheet pressure, ensuring a high flow rate, thus allowing more cells to enter the stream at a given moment. High flow rate used for immunotyping analysis of cells. Low flow rate would be used for DNA analysis. Then there's also the optics, which would follow cell delivery. A light source like the argon ion laser is required to excite the cell. When light from a laser beam intersects a cell at the interrogation point, two events occur, light scattering and fluorescence. Light scattered in the forward direction is detected in a forward scatter channel. And that scattered at 90 degrees to access of the axis of the laser path is detected by side scatter granule to granularity of the cell. The cells tag with fluorescence emit a momentary pulse of fluorescence. A system of optical mirrors and filters then direct the specific wavelength of the light to the designated photodetectors. Basically, class in your flow cytometry, cell would enter a high pressure sheet. Now, itong sheet na to, this is a passageway. Now, it would be hit by lasers pag dumadaan siya one by one. And once it gets hit by lasers class, it would fluoresce. And itong flores na to would be recorded by a system of optical mirrors and filters. Then the directly the specific wavelength of the light to the designated photo detectors. So basically you're measuring wavelengths here. Again, in your flow cytometry, cell would enter a high pressure sheet or a passageway wherein lasers would hit them. And that would lead to fluorescence. Pag nag sila, a system of optical mirrors and filters will then direct the specific wavelength of light to the designated photodetectors. Now let's talk about the photodetectors. The photodetectors, also known as the photodiodes and photomultiplier tubes, convert the optical signals to corresponding electrical signals. The electrical signals will produce a it is proportional to the amount of light striking a cell. So after it would fluoresce class, fluoresce na siya, na-detect na siya ng mga photodetectors nyo, it would be converted into numbers in WBC count, RBC count, and so on. Okay, here are the common applications of your flow cytometry. Now, it could be used for leukemias and lipomas, so immuno immunophenotyping, evaluation of cell surface, <coughs> detection of minimal residual disease, and to identify prognostically important subgroups. There's also your paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, deficiency of CD55 and 59, hematopoietic stem cell and transplantation, CD34+, plus, fetal maternal hemorrhage, detection of fetal hemoglobin in maternal blood sample, anemias, 
refuse to count reticulocytes. HIV for the enumeration of CD4 lymphocytes and histopathy cross-matching or yung MHC nyo. Yung major histocompatibility. Histocompatibility complex. So let's talk about your histograms. Now, your histograms class are graphical representation of data of different cell population. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, your histogram class would have what we call the X and Y axis. So your X axis would refer to the cell size. While the Y axis would refer to the number of cells. Now this would give the information on average size and distribution size. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, this is the normal RBC histogram class. The normal RBC distribution curve would appear like a Gaussian bell curve appearance. So, ganyan siya. <coughs> now, analyzer, sabi ko nga kanina, your analyzer will count the size of your RBCs. Excuse me. Now, your analyzer would count cells with a range of 36 to 362 femtoliters as RBCs. So, kung ang range niya dito class would be 36 to 360, it would be counted as RBC. Now, your MCV is, is a perpendicular line from the peak of the curve. So, your curve here is here to the base. So this would be your MCB. The peak of the curve should fall within the normal MCB range of 80 to 100 femtoliters. So let's say that here we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Now, sabi niya, the peak of the curve, when I say the peak of the curve, yung pinakataas class, it should fall within the range of 80 to 100 femtoliters. If it falls below 80 class, what do you call the RBCs? What do you call the RBCs that would le fall less than 80 femtoliters sa MCB na in the histogram? They would be considered what type of RBC? Microcytic, sir. They would be considered microcytic. Good. Now, if they fall greater than 100, they would be considered macrocytic. Sir, paano ba namin malalaman if femtoliters yung nasa baba or nasa taas? Remember, we're talking about cell size. And when we talk about cell size, this would refer to the volume. And remember, whenever we talk about volume, it would refer to the femtoliters. Well, the cell number yung dami ng cells. So they would count the cells one by one plus uh, get yung curve nyo. And the Gaussian and the Gaussian bell curve, yung middle part niya, yung peak should fall within 80 to 100 to be considered normal. Six. Now, let's talk about the abnormalities in your RBC histogram. Now, we have what you call a shift to the left and a shift to the right. Now, how would you know if there is a shift to the left? 
you would know if it's a shift to the left class if your RBC Gaussian bell would fall, would rise on the left side. So left, left side sa numaas. You would know if it is a right, a shift to the right, if it rises on the right side. And remember, we're talking about cell size here. Ang sabi ko kanina, di ba, dapat mag-fall siya within 80 to 100 para makonsidered na normal city. So if you have a shift to the left, remember dito yung 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, so on, so forth. 60, 70, 80. Ito parang kulitin ko para mas, ano nyo. Mas maintindihan niya. Kapag shift to the left class, it is great. It is less than uh, less than 80. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. Kapag shift to the left ang RBC histogram niya, most likely class less than 80 ang femtoliters niya. And when that happens class, you would have microcytosis. Microcytic ang inyong mga RBCs. But kapag meron kayong shift to the right, okay, 40, 50, 60, 70, 190, 120, 130. You would have a macrocytosis packet. You would have greater than, eight, than 100 femtoliters. Naintindihan ba class? Intindihan class. Are, are there any questions? O gusto niyo ulitin ko? Mas natandaan niyo lang class in a histogram. The mean cell, yung, yung peak ng Gaussian bell niyo or yung curve niyo should be at the middle part. It should be 80 to 100 to be considered thermocytic. Kapag may shift to the left, umangat yung curve on the left side, that would mean lower ang femtoliters nyo. It would be less than 80. And it would a sign that it is micro sitting. Pag shift to the right, it is characterized by macrocytosis. So here's an example class of your called agglutinin RBC histogram. And here's another macro sitting. So if you notice, yung peak niya falls greater than 100, it would consider a macrocyte. Then let's talk about your WBC histogram. So cells greater than 35 femtoliters are counted as WBCs. Cells with 35 to 90 femtoliters are counted as lymphocytes. Cells counted at 90 to 160 are mononuclear cells. These are your monocytes. And cells with 160 to 145 femtoliters are counted as neutrophils. So same principle lang din kanina class. Now, here's our, here are the abnormalities of the WBC histogram. Here we have neutrophilia or increase neutrophilia. Now, kanina sabi, your neutrophil would be measured at 160 to 1 to 450 femtoliters. Now, we have what you call a peak to the left, peak to the left of lymphocytic peak. Now, this would be 35 to 90. We 
35 to 90 for femtal liter sa limpo. 90 to 160 for mono. So let's discuss first itong lymphocytosis niya. If you notice, ang lymphocyte niya would be counted 35 to 90. Now, if you look at the chart class, it would be less than 100. It would fall within the range of lymphocytes. And there would be increased cells. Kaya kayo may lymphocytosis. The curve is within the range of the femtoliter size of lymphocytes. Kesha lymphocytosis. Neutrophilia naman would be 160 to 450. So let's take a look. So you are within the range of the size of neutrophils. Kaya kayo may neutrophilia. Then for monocytes naman, it is 90 to 160. So pasok siya class. Therefore, it is a monocytosis. Naintindihan ba? Just remember the sizes of HWBC. Kapag neutrophil, 160 to 415 femtoliters. Then titingnan nyo na dito class yung saan siya nag-curve. Pasok yung peak. Hindi nyo malalaman if it is neutrophilia, lymphocytosis, or monocytosis. Then platelets naman class are counted 8 to 12 femtoliters. Detection is between 2 and 30 femtoliters. Fix discriminator at 12 femtoliters. So we have pagpasok siya ng 2 and 30. So like this class. <coughs> you would, this would be counted as a platelet. Naintindihan niyo ba? <laughs> Saba mo rin understand Sakit ba ulo? <laughs> Sabat na itinian mo, ah, sure. <laughs> Sabat na rest. Class mo, may tanong ba? If may question, go ahead. Okay lang. Ulitin ko. Just please look at the femtoliters or the cell size sa baba. Then, you would identify easily naman by the number of cell size. The more higher yung peak nyo, most likely may cytosis ka. Kapag naman yung peak mo ay eh, ganito lang kababa. And, it's expected that you would have a pinya. Okay, flagging, last topic. So flags are signals that occur when abnormal result is detected. Now, in automated machines class, let's say maka-detection ng abnormal result, it would signal a flag. Like how you would inform someone na may problema, you would Inform them, they will signal them. Now, flags are signaled by certain asterisks on the report. So, example class, sa machine nyo, ito yung WBC count, tapos. Ang nakalagay dyan, 15 times 10 raised to the 9 per liter. Meron kayong makikita ang asterisk sign sa tabi ng ano. Now, here are your RBC flags. So, seen when... When uh, shown by RBC count, hematocrit, MCB, MCH, and MCH, it would occur when there is platelet aggregation and RBC fragment. So, and then we also have the another RBC flag shown by RBC count, hematocrit, MCB, MCH, and MCH. It would occur if there are cold agglutinants. Then we also have the MP flag seen in close post blood transfusion treated by iron deficiency anemia then we have your wbc flags naman class so various causes for this are platelet aggregates lysis resistant rbc erythroblasts cryoagglutinates and giant platelets we have the w u flag <coughs> cause is your hyperleukocytosis it is generated when there is no deviation of the curve on the UD or if it does not end at the baseline. So normally, ang, ang curve nyo class would fall here at the bottom. Ito yung tinatawag nilang baseline. Now, your WU flag would only happen if it doesn't fall on the baseline. Then you have your platelet flags which occur when the LD 
to the preset type is by 10%. Shown by platelet count and PD and PLCR. Of course, due to noise. Then we have the PU flag. Occurs in hemolytic anemias with fragmented cells and large platelets. And smear on the left class would show three large platelets. Okay. Now, if I notice nyo, ang normal nya would be, ito siya nag-peak class. Now, this peak would involve usually yung mga RBCs na. So, nag-flag siya. Kasi ang kala niya, ang basa niya dyan, is an RBC. Now, on the right side naman, this is the normal size of your platelet. Layo ng diferensya, di ba? Pasok siya sa normal size ng platelets on the right side. <clears throat> so this is an example class of what would your automated machine would look like. So we have your RBC count times 10 raised to the 12. We have 4.95, hemoglobin per DL. And so, so makikita niyo different parameters. May RBC, may hemoglobin, may hematocrit. MCD, MCH, MCH, CPW, and even the platelet count. Now, your quality control. Your quality control would measure the, must be included during each assay run. So, sabi ko nga, this should be done daily, ang QC nyo. While your quality assurance is the overall program that ensures the final result reported by the lab are correct. And your quality assessment naman means to determine the quality of results generated by the lab. Now, itong QA, quality assurance and quality assessment class, this could be done by external validators. And ang external validators natin class sa Pilipinas is your Department of Health via what we call the NECWAS. Now, your NECWAS is the National External Quality Assurance <coughs> National External Quality Assessment Scheme. Now, itong NECWAS na to class, this is required by the Department of Health to renew your license sa laboratory. Kapag hindi niyan na-apply, you won't be able to renew your license sa laboratory. Napusin ko lang to class, ha? So your quality control would measure precision on how well the measurement system reproduces the same results over time and under varying operating conditions. <clears throat> it is designed to detect, reduce, and correct efficiencies in a lab's internal analytical process. It should be simple to use with minimal vial-to-vial -vial comparability. Should be stable for long periods of time and available in large enough quantities for a single batch to last at least one year. Now, there are two types of QC you have your internal and external. Internal would involve the continuous evaluation of reliability of daily work. You would be using a control class, a specimen with a predetermined range of result values. Now, if your result ng control nyo is different from, from the known value, may problema yung method nyo. May problem with the equipment or the method being used. Kapag naman external class, Ito yung sinasabi kong nekwas. You would be evaluated by an outside agency. So performance of a peer group of laboratories. Retrospective yung analysis niya. 
So this is a type of peer control class, a solution that contains the same constituents as those being analyzed in the patient sample. Commercially pro produced pooled RBC or CRAS or stabilized anticoagulated whole blood should have the same test properties as that of blood sample and should have at least one control specimen for every batch. For most tests, a normal and abnormal control are used. Sa iba class, it's normal, high, or low. Depende yan sa machine nyo. Then results are compared with the manufactured change of value and your levy genes. Then there's also the calibrator, which determines the accuracy and precision of the analyzer using a specifically formulated product in order to recover each parameter within close tolerance of known target values and limits. Fine tunes the hematology analyzer to provide the most accurate results possible. So why is calibration done? To ensure reading from instrument are consistent with other measurements. To determine the accuracy of the instrument's reading and to establish reliability of the instrument. 